Friends, the Lord be with you. Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ as we gather on this beautiful Sunday morning to stand before God as the body of Christ and to worship our Lord and Savior this day. Friends, it is indeed a great day to be in the house of the Lord and we are glad that you are here. If you are a longtime member or if you're visiting with us this morning, I do invite you to take our friendship register and to uh, pass it from one side of the road to the other uh, as is convenient. Now is a good time to do that if you'd like uh, to sign and let us know that you're here. And if you are visiting, we'd certainly love to know about that also. Friends, we do have a couple of announcements today. I will let you know that uh, Rhonda Benson's mother continues to pro progress. She is still in the hospital in uh, Spartanburg. Uh, progress has been made over the last couple of days. Rhonda's not able to be with us this morning, uh, but please continue to keep uh, Rhonda and her mom in prayer. Uh, we are hopeful that we will see some positive developments over the course of the next 24 to 48 hours uh, for her. Uh, I want to do a special recognition uh, this morning, uh, and I was telling him this morning, I don't, there may be other people that have done this before, but I, I don't know. Uh, Tommy, Tommy Herger, will you stand up for us, please? He was not expecting that. He received his black belt this week. Uh, received, he didn't receive, he earned his black belt this week. I think that is an amazing thing. And so I, I, made, I took care of this morning, you can sit down, I, I, I took care this morning not to sneak up behind him because <laughs> I didn't want him to get me. But uh, congratulations, you've had some challenges and you have overcome them and they don't give those things away. And uh, we're proud of you and, uh, and I, I'm proud to know you. So congratulations and uh, that's a well, well earned thing. Um, those are all of the announcements I have this morning, but I want to recognize uh, William Smith right now, who's going to recognize one of our graduates. Thank you, Mike. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Remind me if I'm in a dark alley, I want Tommy with me. I didn't know that. Way to go, Tommy. Today is uh, graduation Sunday, and... Um, I can't hardly remember that. That was so long ago for me, and it's probably the same for some of you. But we're, we're really pleased today to honor one of our own, uh, one of our family here who will be graduating in a few weeks from Lawrence High School, Foster Thompson. Foster, would you step up here, please? We, um, his family told him he'd have to give a little talk today, but I told him don't worry about it, unless you want to. I'm good. He, he says he's good. <laughs> He says he's good, but Foster, um, we're so proud of you and, and the accomplishments you, you've had and to be able to graduate and move on. It's, uh, most of us would like to do it over again, but we'll do it for you. How about that? But we're so proud of you. Foster will be graduating shortly. He'll be, a, he'll be going to, into the Air Force, which I think is a, a, it's a tremendous thing. He, it's, it's been his lifelong dream to going to Air Force, so he'll be leaving here sometime in the fall, is that right? Later summer or fall to San Antonio for basic training. So we're just we're real pleased for you and, and very happy for you and, and your family and your plans for the future. Um, if um, we don't really have words to advise you by and all, but, but I, I just ran across some words from, from King Solomon. He says, in, in chapter 3 of Proverbs, My son, do not let wisdom and understanding out of your sight. Preserve sound judgment and discretion. They will be your life for you, an ornament of grace around your neck. Then you will go on your way in safety, and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Have no fear of sudden disaster or ruin that overtakes the wicked. For the Lord will be at your side. And your, and your foot would be kept from being ensnared. So those, these are words that, that we would want for you to move on from here and to know that you have a family here in this church, in this town. There are people that love and care for you, and you'll never be alone. So we just thank you so much, and we're so happy for you. Thank you. 
We have a we have a gift for you, and we just we're so proud of it. Well, several months ago, when the session heard with excitement that Mike McCracken was to receive his doctorate at McCormick Theological Seminary, on May the 11th, the session as a group decided to give Mike a special gift from the session to honor his accomplishment. Mike, we know you must be feeling pride and happiness in your work and life. The session and the entire congregation, we are so very proud of you. We know it took a lot of hard work, commitment, and time to achieve this goal. Mike, our former governor, Nikki Haley, used to say many times, it's a good day in South Carolina when something wonderful happens in our state. Mike, it was a good day in the life of First Presbyterian Church of Lawrence when we selected the Reverend Dr. Frank Marion McCracken. As a session, we would like to present this special gift for your accomplishment. And we want you to open it. And now we've got it. That's not a cake. No, it's not a cake. <laughs> not in here. Give it this. Give me your knife, Andy. No, it'll slide off. I think. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness. The engraving, it's engraved on the front and it's engraved on the back. The engraving on the back reads, The Reverend Frank Marion McCracken, The Session of First Presbyterian Church, Lawrence, South Carolina, May the 11th, 2019, the day you graduated. In closing, after church today, please join us in celebrating all recent graduates. Dr. McCracken's graduation in Hunter Hall for reception, and because we are, and all our graduates, Foster, you included, and because we are such a close church family, we want to celebrate the children of our church as well. As this reception, at this reception, as they have finished as well another milestone in their education as well. So join us and celebrate our pride and happiness in Mike, in Foster, and our children for their work and their life, and let's give our graduates a well-deserved congratulations at this reception. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. I really appreciate it. That's beautiful. And we'll have this on display at the um, reception. I think William took it. Wow, thank you, thank you all. 
I, I said, and I won't go along with this, um, I was really afraid y'all were going to give me a watch <laughs> and so that I wouldn't preach too long. Um, which would have been really funny. <laughs> Some of you know this, in the acknowledgments of the thesis that I wrote for this, I thanked the, the saints of Wynn Presbyterian Church who helped me begin this work, and then immediately thanked the saints of First Presbyterian Church of Lawrence who have helped me bring it to completion. Um, it's, and if you follow social media and you've seen, and we have many friends on social media and you've seen, we took lots of pictures last week. We had a good time in Chicago. We enjoyed it. We all got sick, but that happens when you travel. Um, it's just overwhelming and uh, not finishing school. That's, that's overwhelming and wonderful in its own right. What's overwhelming is the outpouring of love and support that y'all have given to me and to our family since day one. Um, that's the kind of thing that you never, ever uh, forget. And I am deeply grateful uh, to all of you and to God for bringing us together in this call for us to do ministry together. Uh, I'm, I'm just deeply uh, grateful in a way that I don't, I could stand up here and talk for a long time, but I don't think I'd ever stumble upon the words that would adequately express that. So just know that it's there and uh, thank you and uh, on behalf of our family uh, we love you and we are grateful to all of you uh, and grateful to God for bringing us all to this place uh, to do God's work here uh, as best we are able uh, so thanks uh, all of that said Bill uh, Bill Childers has a minute for mission for us Good morning. Good morning. I think I would also speak for the congregation to say that we're very grateful to have you and your family here as well. So I'm here to represent the session and specifically the administration personnel and finance committee. In the vine this week, you may have noticed uh, our current financial report and um, our budgeted income was down uh, a little bit, uh, $27,187. But due to the staff's diligence and the committee chairs uh, being mindful of their spending, their expenses were also down $15,594. But that still leaves us with a, a deficit of $12,193. And we in the past have been in, in this situation at similar times of the year and last year we finished in the black and I have full faith that we will uh, as well this year I just we just wanted to make you guys aware that while you're away from home for the summer um, that the Commission for Public Works will continue to send bills to the church and that um, we want you to be prayerfully remember the church um, in your giving while you're away and also to let you know you may not be aware that you can do online giving if you go to www.firstpreslawrence.org there's a banner at the top and I'm going to put an insert in the bind this week with a, um, a tip sheet on how to do it but basically you click grow give and then donate and it gives you the option to donate once or you can donate at regular weekly intervals or annual intervals or whatever you might choose. So in closing, let's all remember our church and our prayers and, and also through our giving even during the summer as we're reminded in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Thank you. And uh, thank you for all the work that the, uh, the APF committee is doing to stay on top of things uh, for us.
Friends, those are all of our announcements, so let us again turn our hearts and our minds to God's worship this day. Friends, I invite you to rise and join with me for our call to worship, which is responsive this day. Alleluia! Christ is alive. Let all the people praise him. Friends, if we say that we are without sin, then we deceive ourselves, and the truth is indeed not in us. So before God and neighbor, let us confess our sins, first in unison, and then in silence. God of mercy, your command to love one another across all differences opens us to new horizons, yet we often respond with fear and judgment that hinders your goal for humanity. Forgive our sins, we pray, and give us a true repentance that leads to new life for all creation. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, it is the good news of the gospel 
that in Jesus Christ we find our redemption and we find truly that all things are being made new. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Friends, you may be seated. And if all the, the children are already coming down, but if all the children will come down. Everybody's a little sleepy. Yeah. Let's try that again. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, that's, y'all yeah, wake up in a hurry. So, when I was little, I've got a scar. You can't, you can almost see it. There's a little scar right here on my arm. I was riding my bike one day, and I liked, when I rode my bike, I used to love to, uh, to go, you know, ride as fast as I could and go up to a little hill and jump over the hill, you know, catch a little bit of air. My days of catching air are long gone, but, but, um, but I did that. I love to do that on my bike, and one day I did, but I, I landed wrong. And when I landed wrong, somebody had left, they'd been littering, I guess, they'd left a, 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 a bottle or something in the ground, and I landed on it. And I have this scar because I landed on it, and it cut my arm real bad. And has anybody, you ever fallen down and been hurt real bad? Skinned your knee, hurt yourself? How bad was it? It was real bad. So you fall down. What do you want when you fall down and you get hurt? An ice pack. You want to feel better. But you know, who, is there anybody in particular you want when you fall down like that? Your mom. Yeah. I was the same way. When I fell down and I cut my arm open and it was hurting, I, all I wanted to do was go back to my house and find my mom. Because mom was going to know what to do about that. And more often, because I was crying and I was upset and I was hurt and all that stuff. And, and you know what? When you're crying and you're hurt, what does mom do? She takes care of what's wrong, or dad does sometimes. They take care of what's wrong, but then they wipe away the tears, right? Clean her face up, tell you it's going to be better, and they hold on to you, right? That's kind of how it works. Well, in today's passage... It's at the very end, just almost exactly the end of the Bible. Basically, that's what the Bible tells us that God is going to do for all of us. It says that when God is with God's people, with all of us, that, there, that he will wipe away every tear from every eye. And when I read that, you know what I thought about when I fell down on my bike and I hurt myself. And I thought about when all I wanted in the midst of being hurt was for mom to take care of it. And she did. And she wiped the tears away from my eye. And I knew it was going to be okay. It still hurt a little bit. Still stung and, you know, still had to get the Band-Aid. And actually, I think I had to get some stitches. Uh, But the fact that mom was there and taking care of me made it all better. And that's what God is promising no matter where we are in life. And that's really good news for all of us, that God loves us just like moms do. We had Mother's Day last week, and everybody celebrated Mother's Day. And this reminds us that God loves us just like that. So let's pray. Dear God, thank you for loving us. We look forward to you making it so that we will never cry again. Amen. Thanks, guys.
Friends, let us pray. Holy and loving God, we pray that your spirit will move among us this day, that the word that is read and the word that is proclaimed will indeed be your word sealed upon our hearts that calls us to act in the world. We pray, Lord, this day for all who are sick and in need of healing. We pray, Lord, that you will act in their lives, that you will act in the hands and the work of the doctors and nurses that are caring for them. And we pray mostly that your presence will be upon them, that they will know that you are with them and that they are never alone. We pray this day for all who hunger, both in body and in spirit. And we pray, Lord, that you will teach us to be agents of your peace, that they may be fed by your hand and acts that you inspire us to do. And we pray also, Lord, that you will be near to those hungering in spirit, that they will know your peace and your presence. We pray this day for a world that seems racked with violence and hatefulness. And we pray, Lord, that even amongst all of that, you will, see, or you will cause us to see that you are indeed making all things new in our presence and that you will make us, Lord, builders of your kingdom. We pray for your spirit of peace to prevail. We pray for leaders locally and nationally and globally to be turned to your desires and to your will and not those of human flesh. Lord, we come before you praying all of these things, knowing that the deepest prayers of our hearts never pass our lips, but you who knew us before our bones were knit together knows us still. And we pray that you will hear the prayers that we do not utter but that fill our souls. We pray all of these things, Lord, knowing that you call us still to come before you and to pray using the words that you teach us to pray over and over again, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading this morning is from Psalm 148. I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. And I invite you to hear now God's word to the church this day. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens and praise him in the heights. Praise him all his angels. Praise him all his hosts. Praise him sun and moon. Praise him all you shining stars. Praise him you highest heavens and you waters that are above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let all of them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people, praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Our New Testament reading this morning is from the book of Revelation, and it's very nearly the end of the book of Revelation. It's chapter 21. Revelation goes to uh, 22. But I invite you to hear now God's word to us this day. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. 
And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them and they will be his peoples. And God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. And then he said to me, I am the, it is done, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, friends, we're going to try something a little different this morning. It's okay. We may not do it every single week, but we're going to do it this week, and we're going to do it in the spirit of what we've learned from our reading in Revelation this morning. So uh, this is one of the ancient traditions of the church. It's called call and response. And so I'm going to invite you to say something. I know we're Presbyterians. This is hard. It's going to be okay. All right, just trust me. So, I want you to look at your neighbor, someone sitting near you. It works especially well if you're married to your neighbor. <laughs> You'll find out in a second why. But if, you, if you're not married to them, that's fine. Just look at someone near you and say to them, all things new. On three, one, two, three. All oh. things new. Okay, y'all did really well with that. That was good. I was a little nervous. All right, look at them again and say, all things new, all things new. Now, look at the same person and say, even you. (laughs) Some of y'all said that with a question mark. You know that question mark at the end of something like, I'm not, yeah. That's why it works really well if you're married to that person. Even you. We're going to come back to that. We had to do something a little different this morning because we're doing Revelation. And preaching Revelation is always something different anyway. It's a different animal. Revelation is full of all kinds of powerful and I think for our modern eyes, intimidating imagery. It reads like Game of Thrones. I know I've mentioned that before, but it does. There's dragons. There are cities set on end. And this is a genre of writing that comes to us in Scripture that's known as apocalyptic poetry. And there's a lot to that, but we're not going to unpack every bit of Revelation this morning. We're not going to unpack all the cities We're not going to unpack all of the imagery of the pale rider and the sea of fire. Suffice it to say that John of Patmos, who is generally agreed upon as the the writer of Revelation, was talking, and this is part of the the genre of, of the type of writing Revelation is, that what is being written about is being written about somewhat in code, Uh, because he can't just come out and say it's all about Rome and it's all about the empire and it's all about the emperor and it's all about the things that are going to happen to the emperor. He has to write very uh, in very detailed otherworldly imagery so that the message can get out there to people and the idea is that, okay, we know what he's talking about. But then towards the end of Revelation, we we sort of get rid of some of those major images. And there will be a day that we'll sit down to probably do it better for a study. But 
for all of its powerful and strange to us singing images, images, they go away. And what we have this morning is a simple testament to God's redemptive work even in the worst, even in the most confusing, even in the most desperate seeming of human conditions, what we see is a very simple, a very plain, and yet a very powerful statement, testament of what God means to do in the world God means to make all things new all things new even you even me even the church even the community even the world we live in and so if you take nothing away from nothing else away from Revelation Uh, and the strange exercise we did at the beginning of the service. Take away this, that Revelation here is culminating as a testament to what God is promising to do for the whole world, what God is promising to do for you and for me. And if you look at nature... If we look at nature, if we look at Scripture, if we look at all of these things, we find that this is not new news. This is consistent with what God tells us all the way through. It echoes nature, creation. All of creation is made so that it recreates itself. We humans have children, new beings. They look kind of like us. They act kind of like us, but they're new. Trees, flowers, plants, all things become new in season. And we see that recreated in the cycle of crops and the cycle of the seasons. We see it in Scripture, where in Isaiah chapter 43 The word comes to Isaiah that God says, See, I am doing a new thing. It springs up all around you. Don't you see what's happening? I will make a way in the wilderness and streams in what appear to be wasteland. We see it in Jesus talking to the disciples at the Last Supper where he gives them a new commandment. He says, We're going to do things a new way, that the way to live out your discipleship in, to me, in me is to love one another. Jesus is not just rehashing all of the scripture that came before him. He's adding on to it. He's making something new out of God's commandment to us and calling us to be new and different people. And if you take Paul's writings, and again, we're taking a wide swath with it this morning but if you take Paul's writings and you really boil them down what he's talking about over and over again from the time of his own conversion throughout his life of evangelizing to the many churches Paul is saying over and over again that we as Christians following the risen Christ are nothing less than new creations that we are continually being transformed into something new and different than what we've experienced before. That we are being transformed into what God created us to be. And so we come to this verse. These words here at the end of Revelation, and Revelation being at the end of the Bible. And as one commentator puts it, the Bible begins with a garden, and then it ends with a city. And both of which are things which have God's deep love and approval. God looks at the garden at the end of the creation narrative 
He looks at the garden, he looks at all of creation, and he says, this, this is a good thing. And then the holy city descends in Revelation. A city not that God creates and sets humanity to live in by itself, but a city in which God says, I'm going to come and inhabit and be in this place with my people. And this also is a good thing. Now, we come to this passage a few weeks still after Easter. We're still, we're still displaying the cross. We'll do that up until Pentecost. We're still wearing white. We're still celebrating the season of Easter. And Easter reminds us in the resurrection that we don't have to be afraid of death. And that is a powerful and a wonderful thing. That is indeed good and wonderful news for all of us to celebrate and be a part of. But our passage today, when taken along with that, reminds us of something else that is equally powerful and equally good news. And that is that as much as the resurrection reminds us not to be afraid of death, the fact that God comes and promises to make all things new, even you and me, even the church, that means that we need not be afraid of life either. You see, that's kind of the hard part for us. It's the hard part because we read in here where... God says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. It's a reference to the Greek alphabet, the first letter being Alpha, the last letter being Omega. And and I think that we actually have a pretty easy time coming around to that. We get that part. We understand that God was there at the beginning, created a good and wonderful world to live in. And we understand that Jesus redeems us and that God will be there for us at the end of our days. The trick, maybe not the trick, the hard part for us, we humans, the hard part is the middle part. The hard part sometimes is not envisioning the alpha, the beginning, or the omega, the end but coming to grips and coming to faith with the fact that God is with us right here in the middle, in the middle of everything. You see, God chooses to come and to live in the midst of our very messy, very complicated lives. The parts of our lives that don't make any sense sometimes. God chooses, God has chosen to come and be a part of that. And we see that borne out in the story that Scripture speaks to. Christ comes to live not in an already perfected world, but Christ comes to live with imperfect, messy complicated human beings going through things in life that are not yet new. Christ comes to be with us in the hospital. Christ comes to be with us in a broken or awkward relationship. Christ comes to be with us when Finances are such that it seems like maybe the month is going to last longer than the money will. Christ calls us to remember that in the midst of our pain and suffering, this is where God chooses to reside with you and with me in the middle of all that we are experiencing. 
You see, God chooses to be with us in those places where it's hard for us to even discern whether we're closer to the beginning or the end. Those places come upon us, it seems like, all too often. We find ourselves in the midst of pain or we find ourselves in the midst of confusion, which can come from any number of different reasons. And even in those places, we can look up and say, well, God created us good and things were good at one point and I believe that God will be there at the very end. But what I really need is for God to be here with me right now. And this passage reminds us more, I think, than any other that the whole of Scripture points to God coming to these hurt and broken places, these middle places where we need God the most. This, in fact, is where God says, I choose to dwell with my people. And so this good news that we celebrate, this good news that even in the midst of our own middle places where we're not sure if we're closer to the beginning or the end and we're not sure how it's all going to work out, these places where God chooses to come and be with us, this is a call to action for us, not in these places to be passive, not to just wait and see how this is all going to work out, not to just hope that we can hold on for just a little longer, but to act in whatever way that we can, to act on behalf of God's kingdom.